few of us are lucky enough to have the perfect loam soils. But all soils have their pros and cons. Clay is nutrient rich but can come with drainage problems, while sandy soil drains so well that all nutrient and water can flush straight through. There's an old saying, clay soils can break your back, but sandy soils, they can break your heart. Adding compost will improve any soil. It helps sandy soil retain water and nutrients and will improve the drainage of clay soil. But there will always be limits. However, by playing to the strengths of your soils, you can get fantastic results. When we moved to our South Hobart home, we stripped back all the topsoil from the planned grow areas, shaped the hillside, then put the topsoil back. It's heavy clay here, so we combined the topsoil with compost and aged manure and created lots of raised beds. They create better drainage and soil depth, allowing you to grow a wider range of veggies. The depth of raised beds at my place varies from 20 to 40 centimetres, and this dictates which plants will go where. But it's still super variable across the whole site, because some beds have ended up with more clay content than others. While it may all look the same on top, you can tell the difference from the plant outcomes. Brassicas normally do really well in clay soil, and kale and broccoli are two of my family's favourites. So I always grow a range of broccolis throughout the seasons. Both these broccoli beds were prepared in exactly the same way, and they're near one another. But while one is pumping, the Romanescos are looking so sad that I'm surrendering and pulling them out. I'm leaving in the sprouting broccoli because I think they're in with a chance. But overall, this soil is obviously lacking something. So I'm going to give it a bit of a boost. I'm aerating and adding gypsum to the soil. This causes a chemical reaction that helps to bind the small particles of clay together, forming larger particles which allow water and air to move around more easily. Now I'm adding canola meal and compost to feed the soil. Generally speaking, clay can meet the need of a variety of plants. Shallow-rooted, top-heavy plants like corn, cabbage and Brussels sprouts can benefit from the anchorage of clay. And moisture-loving plants like lettuce, celery, Asian greens and chard benefit from clay's ability to hold water. Peas and bean crops do well in the wetter, heavier beds with more clay, as do shallow-rooted greens like rocket. Spring onions are a quick, easy crop gap filler in clay soils, and even smaller root crops, such as radish and small beetroot, do pretty good too. While some people believe that planting potatoes can help break up heavy clay soils, I've experimented with this over the years, and I'm not convinced. My best results with growing spuds in my heavy soils have been from planting the sea potatoes in a no-dig garden bed. Here's one I've already prepared. I'm going to plant some spuds in here, and by the time I harvest, the soil will have matured and be ready for the next crop. All this extra organic matter is what's really improving the soil, not necessarily the potatoes. Another way to improve your heavy clay soils is to build compost in your veggie beds. One way you can do this is build a worm tower. All you need is an old bucket. I've got a 20 litre bucket here. And you can drill some holes in the side and in the bottom and then put it into your garden bed. And pack the soil around it. Once you've got your bedding in, you can then put some food scraps in from your kitchen. Get some compost worms. The exciting bit is when you can put your compost worms in, which will love all those food scraps. Cap it off with some nice mulch, which will help moderate temperature and moisture. And then finally, a little rain hat. 
those worms will get busy, eat all those food scraps up, and then move in and out of the holes in the side of the bucket, cycling nutrients into your surrounding veggies, improving soil and improving the plant health. So when you're growing hungry veggies, preparing your soil is never a set and forget job. You need to check conditions and top up with compost or aged manures regularly. But by getting to know your soils and playing to its strengths, you'll not only avoid frustration, but you'll get the very most out of your beautiful garden.